So to get started, I have um, the shirt we're going to work with loaded in this scene with the, the Genesis 2 female. Um, I've hidden a bunch of her groups, the uh, groups that the shirt uh, doesn't cover because we don't want to export those. So to start with, I'm going to just hide the shirt. You can see this is the part of Genesis that I want to work with uh, as my, my collision object. So I'll uh, go ahead and I will export it. So in this window, the important thing is that you want the units set to uh, poser units because that's the uh, that's the scale that Wrinkle works at. Uh, make sure you write groups and write surfaces and just click accept. And then I will go ahead and hide Genesis and bring back the shirt. Make sure it's selected. And I'll do the same thing. Same thing about the units, groups, materials. So let's start with the models uh, panel. We're going to bring in the models that we exported from DAS Studio. So I'll choose the shirt. That's the clothing model. And then for collision, I'll add Genesis 2. I'm going to make sure that the clothing model is selected. I'll just use the select button here. So let's go over the the other three panels. First off, if any of these panels aren't visible, go to the View tab, and you can toggle them on and off by using the uh, toggles here in the Show Hide group. The Simulation panel allows for creation of morphs for the current uh, clothing model. So each simulation creates a morph of the same name. So you can think of them as one and the same. And you have a list of simulations. You can, of course, add more and move and rename. Beneath that, you have the simulation settings. Cloth type goes from soft to rigid. So sort of like um, cotton to leather. Uh, damping limits the amount of change within a short period. Um, collision quality and higher provides better collision at a cost of time and overall simulation quality. And smoothing will apply a smooth to the model once the simulation is complete. I'm going to turn that off for now. And I'm going to increase the collision quality. So around there, maybe drop the simulation quality down a little bit. And below that, we have the commands to start and reset, which I will cover in a minute. Uh, next to that, we have the forces panel. Forces uh, affect the model during the simulation. The primary and default force type is gravity which will pull the, the model in the, in the direction of the arrow. So by default, of course, it's pointing down, but you can uh, rotate the force and um, have gravity go in any direction by selecting it in this list. And turn on the rotation tool, and then use the handles to rotate it. It's possible to have multiple um, simulation, um, multiple forces in the simulation. Of course, add new ones. And there are a lot of options. I'm not going to go through all of them. So for this tutorial, we're just going to use the default gravity force. But there is more information in the, in the user's manual. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and hide this panel. Next, we have the groups control panel. Uh, group, 
Control groups are very important in controlling the behavior of the simulation. Uh, you'll notice here we have this control groups toggle. If you were to check this off, you would just see the normal groups that are in the model. Those are basically just here for selection purposes. Uh, so we're not even going to look at those. We'll just concentrate on the control groups. Uh, they're created by default, and uh, we're going to cover a couple of them. Uh, the other ones, uh, you can find out details about them in the user's manual. Uh, starting with all, all is just the uh, catch-all for all polygons, not in any other group. It's the default group, so right now all the polygons are in that group. Uh, if you right click in the viewport, you see the different uh, draw modes for the view. By default, it's going to be set to group. That's probably where you'll want to keep it most of the time. The fixed group, so if you have polygons in the fixed groups, they're not changed during the simulation, so they're fixed in place. And you use this group to anchor the model and to lock down areas that you don't want to change. So even though the model is going to collide with uh, the Genesis 2 model, we do want to kind of try to hold it in position. So we will lock down some parts of it, uh, typically a high part like the collar, maybe the end of the sleeves. While we have fixed selected, let's talk about um, auto fixed. Auto fixed automatically adds polygons to the fixed group. So it, the software examines the model and tries to select the best polygons to fix in place. So I'm going to go ahead and run that now. Take just a few seconds. So you can see uh, this group is yellow by default. You can see it's selected sort of the, around the collar and the uh, end of the sleeves and uh, the bottom trim of the shirt and the chest area. You can of course change this to whatever you like. Um, to change groups, you can. we have different selection uh, modes, rectangle, polygon, just a single polygon at a time. You know, a good thing to use though when uh, working with groups is to use uh, paint selection. So paint selection will just let you sort of drag your cursor across the screen and paint a selection. We also have paint group, and what that will do is just paint in the current uh, selected group. So if I choose paint group and have fixed uh, selected, I just drag across the arm. Once I let go, you can see this is now yellow. If I wanted to put it back to the, um, the all group, I would just select all, and I can just uh, paint over it. Once again, you can change the size of the, the paint brush by uh, using the left and right arrow keys. You can see down at the bottom, uh, it shows you the brush size as you do this. If you hold down the left mouse button, it shows you sort of a preview of the size as you, do, as you move the left and right arrow keys. So with this basic set up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my first run. So typically what you'll do is you'll run the simulation, watch it for a little while. As you run you'll see a preview of, of the results in the viewport. And then you, we'll make uh, tweaks to fix any problem areas or change settings if we're not happy with the way it looks. So once I press start you'll see that the reset button will turn to stop so you can stop at any time uh, and you'll get the results at that current point in time so it's a good idea when you're first setting things up to watch what happens and then maybe let it run to 30 40 percent and then stop if you're not happy with the results you'll see the percentage uh, down here on the status bar as it runs so I'll go ahead and press start
it'll take a second to get going. Uh, the groups uh, disappear, but they're still there. And you can see down here in the corner, simulation status is at uh, 10%. And then you can see the model start to wrinkle. So it's at 62%. Now I'm going to go ahead and press stop. You'll see the button changes to stopping. It takes a few moments for it to actually stop. Once it does, the button goes back to reset and the groups are displayed again. Okay, it looks pretty good except for we have these areas. Uh, near the elbow here and in the back you, the, where we're having the, uh, problems. So we're going to use the high collision group and the fixed group to deal with these areas. The high collision group will cause the simulation to use a higher amount of collision uh, quality on the areas that we specify. So I'm going to switch to paint uh, paint group and then I'm just going to sort of paint over these areas you can see it's sort of a light blue color So I've uh, finished uh, painting in those areas with high collision. I'm also going to switch to fix and uh, put some fixed sort of in the center of these areas to also aid. So that it will be fixed in that area, but uh, this will help with any uh, penetration problems that we're having. And in another tutorial, I'll show you how you can uh, go back and localize wrinkles to a, a certain area using the limit group, but that is for another tutorial. So I'm going to just hide just for a second so you can see what I did as far as painting in here. just back and then I will just make sure I have the clothing model selected. So with that we're going to go ahead and run it again with these new settings. So to run it again you don't need to do anything other than just press start and it will reset it and start it over again. I'm going to leave the settings how they are for now. So I let it run to completion and it's looking good except for maybe right here. So I could probably just put a little bit more fixed in this area right here. Uh, also we have this small area here. Um, this area though I want to use, uh, this is small enough, I'll probably just use uh, post editing to fix this. So you can do a minor amount of editing in a um, wrinkle. So you can select vertices and polygons and move them around using the, the move tools. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to just do a paint selection here and then I'm going to go to the toolbox. I'm going to use a command called expand selected. Just kind of pushes it out and I'll just a little smooth on it. And that pretty much takes care of that small area. This area is a little bigger so I'll just go ahead and 
paint in some fixed here and then I'll just run it again and we should be done with this so I completed running again uh, one mistake I made is that whenever you do any sort of edits you want to do that after you completed uh, running the simulation because any changes will be lost so I'll just, I'll just go ahead and select that area again run expand selected again so with that I'll go to smooth and we are basically done if you want of course you could increase the simulation quality or turn smooth on and run it again but I'm pretty happy with the results so now we can move on to exporting it so I'll go ahead and export the object uh, under here we have export morph objects you can choose current or all if you have uh, multiple uh, simulations that you want to export so I'll just go ahead and choose current let's take the default name and click save so in Dad Studio I loaded up the original shirt made the materials all white just to make it easier to see I'll use a uh, Morph Loader, and choose the Morph Files, choose the object that we exported, or keeping from at Poser Units, and then I'll just go ahead and click Accept, brings in the Morph, Morphs, the Wrinkle, and you can just dial it up to whatever level you like, and that pretty much concludes the tutorial. Uh, look for more advanced uh, tutorials in the near future. Thanks.